Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the arena. And I know I promised you guys um, a few months, by, about a month ago, when I made the uh, Mono Green Stompy deck. And I thought, well, why don't we start, um, pick that back up, how to, you know, the deck building 101 thing again in, in, into uh, this new set. Throne of Eldraine. I'm sorry, it's a slow day for me. Um, it's been raining all week. Um, rain, shine, rain, shine. It's kind of weird. Um, like, it'll be cold in the morning, it'll be hot in the afternoon, and then it'll be cold and wet, rainy and damp in the evening, at night, before we go to sleep. So it feels like, I don't know, I'm, I might be coming down with the flu. I'm just trying to hold in here, <laughs> keeping it together. Um, as for as long as I can and make start making videos in advance um, just so that you know in case I, I come down with the flu um, I can get some rest and you guys will still have some videos to watch I just have to publish them anyway so here we have um, we're gonna start with that mono blue thing uh, deck building 101 whatever so mono blue, as I said in um, previous, uh, in in the previous video, as I briefly explained what the colors are all about. Uh, mono blue is all about the. Let's just do this. They're a little bit bigger. Mono blue is all about you know um, having control, mind, knowledge. Um, the blue colors, that's what they are. So normally they're all about drawing cards or scrying. You'll know uh, that's where you'll normally see that that kind of uh, mechanic uh, to scry, which will be in the blue colors. And to scry is sort of to you know check out in advance um, what you're about to draw or what's on the top of your hand. Um, when it's com combined like this in op, scry then draw. It turns out to be really handy because if you're mana flooding. Uh, well, if you're mana flooding and the top your your top card it turns out to be a land, at least you can now put that card underneath because um, that's what Scry does. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card on the bottom of your library, so you can do that. <clears throat> you can draw um, your new card that isn't a land since you already put it underneath, and hopefully that the the card underneath your top card is not a land and is something useful something that you can actually use um but then um so that's just not what uh the blue colors are all about and uh because you know draw cards but you can also force your opponent to um throw out cards um you can, well that is to say you can also force your opponent to draw cards for them but uh we don't want that. that then they'll have card advantage which means that they have more cards in their hand that means they have more options um of of whatever they want to do on their next turn so most likely you're going to want the your your player to sort of throw out put their top cards into the discard pile and uh, that's why we're going to you know we're going to put some of these um creatures like the merfolk secret keeper and we're gonna have some of that in in our deck this deck that we're building it's gonna be mono blue i think we want four i'm not really so sure if we want really four but we, we can always change it a bit uh, all right um let's see what do we want i think we do want this these are new cards and i really love them for whatever worth they are they really are worth it if you're into the whole you know a uh, mill well in this case um when when someone says mill or if your deck is a mill type it means that you're kind of uh, denying your opponent of cards uh, mill can either mean you're throwing out cards from your opponent's library or they can also mean that you're throwing out cards from your library um in in that sense then you're a self mill and there's actually a win condition for that where you're um, throwing out all these cards, you're discarding it, and you're just trying to uh, get rid of your library. And then ultimately, you can cast Jace, 
Uh, where is where's that card? That Planeswalker card here. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, wherein um, he has this little passive ability. That is, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. So, if you run out of cards and you have Jace on the board, but this is kind of risky because he is a Planeswalker. Uh, so you got to make sure that when you run out of cards, your opponent is it doesn't have um, anything to destroy your Jace. Because if you run out of cards and Jace is out of the picture, is out of off the board, and you just lose straight out. So we're gonna put, I think we want three of these, maybe, um, just in case because we have a lot of draw cards ourselves. But um, that's like it's an option, and it also helps. Jace's also help um, with the mill opponent milling out because his plus one loyalty ability. That's what we call it. This plus one target player. Puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard, then draw a card. So we draw a card, our opponent has to discard or remove the top two cards of their library, put it into, into their graveyard. I think we do want the Overwhelmed Apprentice. This is a really valuable card. It's cheap, it's an uncommon uh, card, it's um, easy to draw, it's easy to, I mean, it's easy to pull from boosters, it's easy to um craft because uh if you have a lot you know, most likely you have a lot of uncommons uh uncommon wild cards so it's easy and the the value of this card is so amazing because it is a one to cast and you get so much out of it you you get to deny your opponent of the top two cards of their library and you can put it into their graveyard sort of mill them let's just use that term now um, and then you can scry for two. So if you have like a terrible starting hand and you don't want to, you know, you've been, you've already mulliganed once, you've already mulliganed twice, and then all of a sudden on your second mulligan, you already have, you, you grab the Overwhelmed Apprentice. It'll help you sort of, you know, um, gain the advantage despite the fact that you're already two cards down. Um, so you can scry and so you can, you can probably, I don't know, um, get an opt out of it or um look for a draw card maybe or just something a little bit more useful to you if you notice that you're, you're in, in a little bit of a pinch so i think we do want um to put like four of these have this is these two are so far like the best um probably more so for overwhelmed apprentice so these two are probably like the best uh cards that you can have in a blue deck any blue deck, even if it's Demir, I think uh, having Overwhelmed Apprentice is still something. Um, probably not the Secret Keeper if you're running Demir, but if it fits into your sort of deck archetype, sure, why not? That that one to cast creature is still going to provide as a blocker, especially when you're having those bad days. Now, another card that I want to sort of put into the light is. Um, uh, my voice, <laughs> my throat is so itchy. Uh, it's well, actually one of the reasons why I haven't been making uh, um, book readings lately because I feel like if I push my voice, uh, I might just, you know, give in. My body might just give in, and um, I'll I'll have like some sort of tonsillitis or something. So another card that we that came with this set, Eldraine is the Vantress Cargirl is really amazing. You've probably gone up against it if you're, you know, a veteran and you're watching this video. Um, if you're a newbie, you've probably seen it and you haven't really uh, absorbed how how powerful it is. But it is a very strong card despite the fact that it has a very huge setback because um, in order for Vantress Cargirl to be able to attack, your opponent needs to have um, seven or more cards in their graveyard. Now, to make that work, you have to combine it or sort of combo it alongside these these two cards, uh, Overwhelmed Apprentice and Merfolk Secret Keeper. Because as soon as you get Gargo of uh, the Vantress Gargo, you really want to put it down on the board um, as soon as you possibly safely can. Um, because it is a 5-4 creature. It is very hard to deal with. Um, early on, I mean, if you can manage to put this down on the board early, you already have the advantage of the game for probably a few turns or until your opponent decides to destroy it. 
<laughs> Additionally, if you don't have like you can put it down even though your opponent doesn't have um three uh cards in their graveyard because uh, the Avengers Gargoyle has a tab ability down below. It says each player puts the top card of the library into their graveyard. So that also means you. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword or double-edged blade. But it works more into your favor because um, most likely you're... I mean, it, it, it just it works more into your favor that way. Even though if you accidentally draw, um, discard something from your deck at least... You know that your opponent is one step closer to their doom because you're discarding cards on their side which is sort of what i mean this is what this deck is mostly all about if you've already put down secret keeper he probably already has four in the bin if you're a little bit less um off that means you only need three more so in three turns your gargoyle can attack that is also to note that your opponent will be you know playing cards as well and that those spells will go into the bin and contribute to you know the, your the, the value that you can get out of the gargoyle um to block you need to make sure that you need to have four cards in your hand that's very important do not forget about that you need to have four cards in your hand at least four um but this is a very valuable card i think we'll put two of those in there I think I'm over explaining these things, but I guess um, it's for your benefit, I suppose. It's ah, another one that I actually want to put in there is Wall of Thoughts. Now, Wall of Thoughts also um, discards cards and it's a defender. So if uh, you draw this at first, at least you, it's a it's a meaty defender. It doesn't really do damage when your opponent attacks with a creature, but at least it's there. Um, it's it's one of those awkward quote unquote um creature cards because normally your opponent won't deal with it <laughs> they're, they're not they're less likely to sort of um spend a spell a destroy spell or a removal to get rid of your wall of thoughts unless they absolutely have to because they'd rather spend it on something like a vantress gargoyle or um they'd rather sort of ah another thing coming up um, they'd rather use it on maybe a Merfolk secret, secret Keeper or an Overwhelmed Apprentice. So I think we're going to put in maybe two. I don't know. How many do we want in here? Uh, probably just two. Because it is pretty expensive compared to... I mean, the Merfolk Secret Keeper creature is um, a lot cheaper because it it's basically the same thing right it's zero four zero four except wall of lost thoughts is it costs two well I, yeah they're basically the same thing it's just that um on different turns the Mer if you take them for their creature value um i think merfolk secret keeper is a better defender because you can just you know put it down for one you're tight on mana um i was about to discuss what was that card um was it Drowned Secrets? Oh, yeah. Another one is Drowned Secrets. We want this. This is really important. So we think we want four because it's an enchantment. Um, and as I said, uh, I already I just know these things. They just pop into my head as I deck build because I already know that, you know, um, I know what they do. Um, I know how valuable they are. And deck building and, you know, magic in general is all about knowing the cards, knowing what they do um and knowing their workarounds the strengths and weaknesses which is why i really love like going online and uh, just looking for pre-made decks by pros and then just testing it out playing it around playing around with it learning how the cards work how they interact what what can i do what can't what i can't do um and it just so, sort of you know uh, knowledge is um as uh, Will Kenrith would say, uh, as quoted in in the game from the Planeswalker card, knowledge is the best virtue of them all, or something like that. And then Rowan, uh, I'm babbling. Rowan says, and the the power to um, apply it, um, which means the power to apply the knowledge in a proper way, sort of like uh, science, bitch, um, Breaking Bad. Um, you know how. Uh, what's his name? 
uh, Brian Cranston in, the, in, the, in that show says, uh, apply yourself. So um, everything you know, apply it in life. Um, there's very like various. Um, I'm, I'm not here for, as a life coach anyway. So Mystic, um, I think we want thought collapse now for thought um, counter spells. Counter spells is one of the very important cards in a blue deck, and this is mostly what you want to have uh, counter spells. Um, particularly this one, thought collapse, because. We're running around that themed idea of, you know, uh, throwing out uh, cards from your opponent. And uh, emotionally, it is quite annoying. Um, if you're on the receiving end of this deck, it is kind of annoying to see your cards just get discarded. Um, and you're not able to really play it. So we're going to put four of these as our counter spell. It is very expensive, this thought collapse, but don't worry, we have other counter spells in here that we're probably gonna include uh, I think it was didn't say please ah okay so didn't say please is a counter spell that basically functions the same way as thought collapse so we're gonna put that in there four of those didn't say please is a, a very nice card um, it's controller plus the far it's it's just it's basically the same it, it's exactly the same it's just if you need more uh, it's sort of I bet you're asking why why are there uh, cards with with exactly the same ability well it's precisely for this very reason so that you can put two of those types of cards into your deck um, because normally they're not gonna you know you're not allowed to print out thought to um you're not allowed to have two sets of thought collapse into your deck so you're gonna need something else and that's why they put two cards with different names but essentially the same not even just not even just essentially they're like practically they're like the same they're, they're exactly the same hunter target spell control for the, the text is all the same <laughs> all right what is our next card i think uh well, blue has a lot of draw, and I think we need some draw cards in there, draw spells. But we also need some more creatures that can sort of um, apply a little bit of pressure. Um, one card comes to mind. It was it's the Cavalier, one of the really nice, uh, really nice of these. Now, Cavalier of Gales super valuable um if you're if you're playing i uh a blue deck i really i i, I recommend it it's very flexible if you don't have like uh, eternal god kefnit if you're playing it in a, a grixis deck which is grixis is uh red blue and uh black so if you don't have uh kefnit where normally uh what you call it we're normally it's played in Grixis or in Demir colors. So Kefnet or Cavalier of Gales, they, they can be interchanged. Caval the Cav of Gales is a little bit more expensive. Kefnet is only four. And uh, Kefnet's value actually only really comes from when you draw a spell because it can copy it. And then it gives you a little discount to cast it on that turn as you copy it. Well, Cavalier of Gales is um, a, a draw ability but they essentially are the same because, um, well, like not really. Um, they're similar, so you can sort of in interchange them. But it changes your deck. Their their values are very different, so you can it interchange them if you want. But the way you play your deck is gonna change very differently depending on which one you put in there. Uh, if you don't have Cav of Gales, you can probably put God Eternal Kefnet. Um, Kefnet will still have its value because of like. Um, oh wait, no. Well, in this particular deck, no. You, I, I wouldn't, su I wouldn't suggest putting Kefnet in there because um, we don't really have a lot of uh, spells. Yeah, we don't have a lot of spells that can be used uh, that synergizes well with Kefnet. Um, but Cavalier of Gales is a wonderful card. The only thing that can keep it from coming back because Cav of Gales, the one thing that Cav of Gales and Kefnet have in common is that they can both come back from your graveyard or when they're destroyed, when they die, they can both come back except 
uh, Kefnet is a little bit stronger because even if it gets exiled, um, it can it'll still you still have that option to put it back into your library. Cavalry of Gales is um, if it die if it gets exiled, it doesn't come back to your library because of that. There's a very fine difference between that dying and exiling. They're very different things, so um, you got to be careful about that. If you're expecting your Cav of Gales to come back after your opponent exiles it. Uh, too bad it's not coming back. <clears throat> uh, but with that being said, I think we do want Kefnet in there. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me just check Sphinx. Uh, uh, foresight. Kind of do like this in there, so I think we want to put that. That's it. it for this. We just want it there for the scry, and because it's a creature, and if we get it at the beginning of uh, the match, it can scry. Uh, for one, we still get that sort of value out of it. It's also a flying creature, so it's kind of hard to deal with. Same with Cavalier of Gales. Gales, it's a flying creature. It's a little bit harder to deal with. Can't be blocked if you're if the opponent is uh, all uh, ground troops and um also it's also a very big card for it's got four four health uh i think we should start going into the land uh discussion uh this okay so we're playing mono blue so obviously we're not gonna have any other colors uh we don't we don't want this this, this island this design we want this one the one that we bought <laughs> we want this one the one that we bought so we'll start off with 21-ish and then we can start putting in like some of these special ones. Uh, probably we can put one Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, Castle Vantress, I, I, in advance, I do, if you're like hesitating on the land, on what to buy, uh, like I mean to purchase with your, with your wild cards, I do really recommend that if, you, if there's anything that you're going to buy you like you decide on what type of decks that what kind of uh, colors you, that you associate with so if it's blue I really recommend that you buy at least one or two of Castle Vantress with your wild cards because the value of this that scry ability is really really strong especially it, it, it I mean it fixes like it fixes the scry is one thing that fixes um mana screwing uh, especially if it's scry 2 because normally when you scry well, normally um when you're mana flooding or mana screwing it's going to be like um a creature or a spell card a spell card spell card and then land underneath or sometimes it's four lands and then a creature underneath so with castle vantress and that scry i think it's worth it because normally when you're mana flooding or when you're mana screwing you're not really you know <laughs> you're not really going to be um casting well this really only applies for mana flooding because assuming that you you're you know that's a four to cast uh, it's a four to activate rather so assuming that um you're a little bit short on the spells so you 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 i'm, I'm pretty much sure that if you're going to activate castle vantress gonna be when you have a lot of cards um, a lot of mana on the board and there's nothing else that you can do you can't really play cards because you know the card that you have in your hand isn't exactly that useful or maybe um, you don't have enough mana to cast that card in particular so um, instead of you know having your land on the board just untapped and useless then at least you can you know make use of it with a scry and just check out what you've got next in the in their library so uh, uh what was i gonna do oh yeah okay so i said kefnet would be pretty good but not because for its value for its uh, you know flavor for its copy copycat ability but mostly because of um the fact that he's pretty hard to deal with you know he's so we're putting one there as a sort of wild card or as a like a change of pace 
um, just so that, you know, sometimes your opponent has you pegged for one thing and then says, oh, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then they're sort of preparing for the next few turns. And then all of a sudden there's a, you know, a card that they weren't really expecting. And it just completely throws them off. So it, then they have to change their strategy and then all their planning is not really gone to waste, but at least it's um, not as, it's not going to be as effective as they would have hoped. So having like a, a one-off, a, a wild card, so to say, in your deck is going to be useful. Um, I think we do want into into the story. Was it called? Or let's just story. There we go. I think we do want two of these. Um, it's a very expensive card, but um, it becomes more it a lot cheaper when your opponent has uh, seven or more cards in their graveyard yeah the spell costs three less so it becomes a forty cast uh and it, it i mean in this deck you probably do want this because you're you're sort of milling out your opponent and uh when you have that kind of value in there you do want this and it allows you to draw four so it just sort of allows you to continue the fuel of uh spells into your hand what else do we want in here um probably one more i'm not sure if i discussed sideboarding i don't remember if i discussed sideboarding last time but i think i did uh hot collapse Uh, okay. Run away. Run. Oops. Is there a space in that one? Run away together? Okay. So, another thing that the mono blues have... Wait, I think we only have three. I want four of those, though. I think we should just remove one thought collapse. Uh, we'll put in four of these. So, run away together is also a new card. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And look at the, I mean that that art is kind of weird. There's <laughs> some ogre, some weird ogre and some human. They're just running away together. Uh, flavor text too is virtue is virtue. Whatever the heart that nurtures it. Sorry. So choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hand. Uh, one of the nice things that I like about mono blue or the blue colors is that you can. Return, you can sort of bounce, is the term that we sort of use. You can bounce creatures off of the board, um, which means they, they get sent back to their owner's hand. So if, sometimes your opponent's going to have like this really big uh, creature that has a lot of counters on it. Like it's, it's sort of ramped up, as we were talking about in the mono green in our previous video. So um, if you bounce that creature, then uh, with the, all those all those counters sort of reset. So the cards that your opponent spent to you know put those there, those counters there, waste. Um, if uh, I don't know the if your if your opponent had to use uh, planeswalker loyalty points to put those you know those uh, counters there, wasted. So have having that ability to bounce creatures off the board is also useful uh not just for for you in, in that sense but um you can also it can be quite useful if you bounce your own creatures such as like uh if you have the merfolk secret keeper after you've used the sorcery adventure ability and you've put down the the secret keeper you can bounce it back and then it becomes it comes back into your hand as a whole as a as a whole card with complete with the sorcery adventure and uh, the the creature card so you can you can cast uh, venture deeper again which is that's what the sorcery adventure is called so you can cast venture deeper again and then you can put down your merfolk secret keeper again and then um, if you have another runaway together you can bounce it right back then cast it again or um, if you need the scry and there's nothing else in your hand except uh, on the board except for an overwhelmed apprentice you can you know bounce back this apprentice put it back down you mail your opponent for two cards you get the scry for two 
Um, so there's a lot of useful ways to use it. Just make sure that you don't use it on a card where your opponent will sort of um, benefit more than it will benefit you to play this card. But sometimes it's just a last ditch effort and you have nothing else left to do. Uh, and this is the, you know, this is uh, bouncing the opponent's card is the only thing keeping you from dying. And, you, you know, in your next turn, you could could have turned it all around. So don't uh, remove that, that sort of, you, you have that option. That option is there for you to use. So use it wisely. Um, all right. So I think we're happy with our core board. This seems like to be a very good balance. Yeah, we have the counter spells for blue. We have a wild card. We have a planeswalker. It's always good to have at least one in your in your deck. Um, it gives you like the right amount of balance. We have good a number of creatures. Uh, I think what are we running? Twenty three land. Yep, twenty three land seems to be good for this kind of deck. What else? So this seems to be yeah. We got early game. We got late game stuff like cavalier of chaos sphinx of foresight i mean our early game look at this <laughs> it's it's all about counters and uh milling if your opponent doesn't concede before you get to your end game uh, i don't know <laughs> i don't know man if your opponent doesn't concede then that's some kind of a that's one hell of an opponent uh he can keep his emotions in check <laughs> because most people just uh, if you have a starting Starting game like this, most people just concede right off the bat. All right, so our sideboard, just in case you want to use it into, um, just in case you want to use it in best of three. Well, let's see. We we run. We're going on the theme of draws and uh, removals, right? Removing cards from their from their deck. Uh, well, we have drowned secrets. And we don't really have a whole lot of draw, do we? Yeah, no, we don't. We don't have a lot of draw ability, so except for into the story and Cavalier of Gales, so uh, and Jace. But that's these are all like end game stuff, uh, late game stuff. So if we really want to, you know, advance or or mill and mill our opponent, I think we should include like a few other stuff maybe if we can have moo this is the first time i'm gonna be using you as a draw ability right moo because we have a lot of islands um although it, it is kind of like an, a long shot so you might want to replace kefnet you might want to sideboard kefnet put in maybe a moo or two a moo yan ling for two a sky dancer um it's gonna be pretty hard to defend her i will not really yeah, not really, especially... Wait, do we have any fly... Yeah, we have some flying creatures. And we have two gargoyle... Um, Ventress gargoyles in there. Do we have any other flying creatures that will benefit us? Well, we have things of foresight. I almost said foreskin, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Um, Aethergust. Yeah, I think Aethergust is... Uh, a staple for any deck that has the blue color in it because Aether Gust, unlike counter spells, uh, well, Aether Gust is kind of like a counter spell in that aspect. Uh, that you can, uh, um, you know, how like your opponent throws out, there are situations when um, your opponent throws out a planeswalker and uh, you don't have a counter spell for it, and so it, you know, it goes on the board. You can Aether Gust it back into their hand. Uh, of course, they get the benefit of, you know, a reset of the loyalty points or whatever. Or it can be a benefit or a bad thing for them in case they, they've uh, racked up a few loyalty points. But anyway, um, Aether Gust, if you have it in your hand, you can, before, before, um, before the, let's say the Planeswalker or the creature, whatever that is, is placed on the board. Uh, you're given this sort of option to react to it, right? And Aethergust allows you to do that, except it's, it doesn't destroy the card. It just sends it back into the library, into the top of the hand if your opponent so chooses, uh, especially if it's a red or a green card. Um, emphasis on that. 
red or green card. That's why it's always in your sideboard because it adds it. It serves as a sort of you know a what if scenario, and you're not always going to be want, you're not always going to want to have it in your hand, um, or you're not you're, you're not like actively looking for it unless you're up against a, a red or a green uh, opponent, or maybe both red and green opponent or more. So that's why we have Aether Gust. So as I was, I was, I was trying to say that um, before um, your the the card, your opponent's card is placed on the board, he can play Aether Gust and send it back. So it's really useful against like uh, cards that have uh, uh, enter the battlefield effects. So if you don't, if you like, if your opponent is gonna have like a huge advantage because of that card um, simply entering the battlefield. Um, you can cast Aether Gust and uh, it goes back into your opponent's uh, library. So they've, it's a huge advantage for you because your opponent has already used um, the mana for it for to play that card, but did not get the enter uh, or what we call ET, ET, uh, B, ETB, enter the battlefield effect. What else? Uh, I think we want more creatures like Cerulean. Rulian Drake, we can have two of those because it is a, a sacrifice and then counter spell. It's also got protection from red. It's also a flying creature, so you can use it as a sort of chump block. Lazo, I think. Oh, uh, I'm just thinking. So this one is um, sort of like a protection for your creatures if you want want it. I think Narset should be good just to sort of fuel us a little bit more. And then we can have more counter spells like essence capture essence capture is a counter spell for creatures and at the same time you get to pump your uh you get to pump your whatever creature you have on the board a lot of tears i made a there was a deck that i was playing around a while back in war of the spark oh no 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 uh, when m20 came out first time core of course said m20 came out there was a deck i was playing a lot of tears is actually pretty nice um yeah, it's it's earned my respect. Um, so what Flood of Tears does is it returns all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. And if you have, um, I think, what is it, four? Yeah, if you if you if you return four or more non-token permanents you control this way, you may put a permanent card from your hand into the battlefield. So um, it's sort of like a board reset. It's not exactly a board wipe, but since we're playing mono blue. Uh, we don't really have board wipe abilities, <laughs> not really, and I guess Flood of Tears is the closest we can get if we need it, especially in this meta where, um, you know, a lot of decks have these tokens, like the food, food tokens, um, and uh, Garrix, uh, you know, wolves, or a lot of the, uh, what's it called, the zombie decks from Field of the Dead. So a lot of those, if you, you know, it gets returned, they don't really come back. They're not, they don't have any value. So if you, you know, reset, if you bounce them all back, they're, they're gone forever. So token, it's really useful against token decks, token heavy decks, like Celestia. There's a running Celestia deck out there somewhere that's really strong. Celestia tokens. All right. So I think that will conclude our deck building. We'll call it, uh. Well, mono you mill <laughs> mono you mill let's put some like um puns aside <laughs> it, i mean it, it fits perfectly mono you mill um yeah so i guess that concludes our deck building for mono blue mono blue is a quite complicated deck and it really did have to take up an entire episode or entire video um, we'll play test this in our next video. <clears throat> Let's have um, Mu Yan Ling in there. Use Mu Yan Ling as our little card back. And so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, it's the the least I can do is impart like knowledge to the world. Um, so I hope you guys um, enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video when we play test this deck. <laughs>